What is up everyone, my name is Jack Southall, back again with another video, and today I'm here with my WWE Fast Lane 2019 review. Uh, we're only a few weeks away from WrestleMania by the time I'm recording this, and uh, this was the final pay-per-view before we get to the big one, WrestleMania 35, so um, yeah, let's just see how this uh, show went. So um, we only had one pre-show match. Uh, for this pay-per-view, and it was uh, The New Day versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. Uh, the New Day went over in this match, and um, yeah, I didn't really watch it that much, so I can't really uh, talk much about it. Then we get to the opening match, which was for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. It was the Usos defending against Shane McMahon and The Miz, and um, this was a pretty decent match. Uh, the Usos uh, had a Great showing in this, and so did um, Shane and The Miz. The Miz, since the show was in Cleveland, Ohio, was uh, rocking the Cleveland colors, and uh, had a Cleveland is Awesome shirt, and uh, yeah, he was the crowd was just really behind The Miz and Shane McMahon. They welcomed him back home with open arms, let's just say that. So the Usos won this match after Miz had a look at his dad and signaled him to go on the top rope, and uh, so he hits a frog splash, but he gets reversed into a roll-up. Uh, for the Usos to retain uh, the SmackDown Tag Team titles in a pretty decent match overall. Um, the, the matches that the Usos and Shane McMahon and The Miz have had have actually been not that bad, uh, which just goes to show you just how fucking great the Usos really are as a tag team, where you can have this thrown-together team of Shane McMahon and The Miz and they can still get a pretty good match out of it. I think that just shows you how fantastic they truly are. But the real talking point of this match was what took place afterwards. So um, The Miz helped Shane McMahon out of the ring after they uh, couldn't get back their SmackDown Tag Team titles. And uh, he hugs his dad on the outside. But then all of a sudden, Shane McMahon runs from behind, hits, attacks Miz, and uh, rips his Cleveland shirt and just batters him uh, on the outside. And then he walks up to uh, The Miz's dad and uh, pushes him. So yeah, the Shane McMahon is now a full-blown heel. Even on SmackDown, he he like threatened uh, the ring announcer to like say his name properly and just call him the best in the world, just to really piss off the fans, which I thought was just great. Uh, I think Shane McMahon's actually going to do a really good heel, and um, the promo the Miz cut on Shane McMahon was actually really good as well. So um, I think their match at uh, WrestleMania could be okay. I think Shane's going to do some crazy ass shit. But um, this is, the story is really carrying this feud at the moment between the Miz and Shane McMahon, and I think they're going to have a decent decent match at WrestleMania. Right afterwards, we got Elias who would uh, show out show up throughout the night, uh, sings about uh, the Miz getting attacked and makes fun of uh, Mrs. Dad, and also references LeBron James because you know we're in Cleveland and you know he switched sides to the Los Angeles Lakers, I believe. I don't know, I'm not a basketball fan. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And he would, uh, show up later on throughout the night. So, uh, then we had the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Asuka and Mandy Rose. So, Mandy Rose had a little bit of momentum on her side after pinning Asuka on SmackDown a couple of weeks prior. Although, Asuka did beat her up on the SmackDown before Fastlane. So, um, yeah, if you actually thought Mandy Rose was going to get a proper win here, no. Asuka, pr pretty much, um, although she did get some offense in somewhat during the match. Uh, Mandy trips on the ring apron and gets hit with an Asuka kick uh, to retain her title. I thought that was a really weird ending. It didn't really make a lot of sense uh, that she just tripped up on the ring apron. It didn't even look like she tripped up properly. It felt super planned in my opinion, but yeah, Asuka hits the Asuka kick, retains her championship in a match that wasn't really much, honestly. But yeah, Asuka's still SmackDown Women's Champion. I'm not real. I'm still not sure what they're gonna do with her at WrestleMania. I don't know. She has a very. I feel like she's gonna be put on the pre-show, which is very upsetting, personally. But you know what can you do? I guess. Uh, poor Oscar. She's SmackDown Women's Champion, and it looks like she's just in the background because of all the Ronda, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair stuff. So um, right after that match, we get the New Day backstage, and uh, they enter Vince's locker room. And Xavier Woods mentions how uh, Kofi's been waiting for an hour to get inside Vince's office and how he's been waiting 11 years for a proper WWE Championship match. And Vince is like, you know what? You're right. And uh, adds him, and apparently adds him to the title match and makes that match happen right now. 
tells Kofi, oh, get out in the ring. And everyone's thinking, oh, yeah, they're going to have the match for the WWE title right now. And uh, so Kofi enters the ring. However, he is told that the WWE title match will happen later tonight as Vince never stated that he was actually going to be in the match and has said that the WWE title match will be a triple threat match. Instead, he will face the bar in a handicap match, which the fans were not happy about. So both men are allowed to be in the ring at the same time. Uh, also, Big E and Xavier were barred from ringside. So um, Kofi kept fighting back throughout this match, but um, the bar was just too much for him, unfortunately, and uh, defeat him. And then afterwards, Big E and Xavier... Uh, try to help him out, but get stopped by the team of Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev after them losing on the pre-show, so I guess that kind of makes sense. And then we get uh, Elias appearing again, and then he makes fun of uh, Kofi and uh, runs down the Cleveland Cavaliers. And then we get to a uh, triple threat match for the Raw Tag Team titles. It's the Revival uh, defending their belts against Alistair Black and Ricochet, and also the team of Chad Gable and Bobby Roode. This was actually um, quite a fun match. I actually did enjoy it. Uh, Black got tagged in and uh, works on Roode and Gable, and um, he was uh, meant to hit Bobby Roode with the Black Mask, but instead hits Dawson, and then Roode takes the Meteora knees from for Gable. Uh, Dash hit a top rope splash to break uh, Gable's pin, but then Ricochet hits a shooting star, but then Roode breaks it up, and Ricochet also hits a Hanukkah and Runner on Dawson from the top rope to everyone outside, which was a great spot. Uh, Gable tags Ricochet, who dives over the turnbuckle post. There was a shadow machine on uh, Gable for the Revival to retain the championships. And then right afterwards, uh, Chad Gable and Bobby Roode attack the Revival with it after the match, but then Alistair Black and Ricochet hit their finishes on everyone else. So I'm not sure if there's going to be a rematch for the titles at uh, WrestleMania. And if so, I reckon Alistair Black and Ricochet will probably uh, pick up the championships and they'll uh, officially become members of the Raw roster. But um, yeah, we'll just have to see where it leads going into WrestleMania because I haven't really been paying attention that much to Raw because Raw hasn't been that good recently. So I'm not sure if they have been booking the Raw Tag Team Championship scene, but it looks like they're starting to pick up steam again because the Raw Tag Division has been fucking dead for the last couple of months now. So if we can get more matches like these and uh, elevate our teams a little bit more, then the Raw Tag Team division can uh, pick back up nicely, which it definitely needs. Afterwards, we have a United States Championship Fatal 4-Way match. Samoa Joe defending the championship against R-Truth, Andrade, and Rey Mysterio. Now, originally, Andrade and Rey Mysterio were meant to have just a one-on-one -on -one match on the uh, kickoff show, but thankfully, this got turned into a Fatal 4-Way match, and I'm glad I did, because this match was actually fucking great. Uh, Samoa Joe does a middle rope dive to the outside, and uh, he hits a Hanukkah runner on both Andrade and Truth, that was Rey Mysterio, and uh, Joe goes to slam Rey, but then reverses it into a DDT. Uh, R-Truth has Andrade on his shoulders at one point, and then Rey hits a Hanukkah runner on Andrade. Uh, Andrade hits a corkscrew plancha, then uh, hits a Hanukkah runner outside, that was Rey. And uh, because Selena Vega was in the corner of uh, Andrade and Carmella was in the corner of R-Truth, they start fighting with each other. R-Truth hits a five-knuckle shuffle since uh, he's still playing along the fact that his hero is John Cena, which I'm not sure if that's going to lead to a Samoa Joe versus John Cena match. I think that's where they're going with it. Um, but actually, no, he's facing Rey Mysterio for the US title, which that will actually be... a pretty good match. I expect that to be a show stealer or a great opener for WrestleMania 35, but um, Ray hits a 619. He uh, misses the splash and gets caught in the Kokita clutch for Samoa Joe to retain the title. Similar to the Raw Tag Team title match, this was a lot of fun. This was probably my favorite match of the entire show. I thought it was very fast paced. These four guys, even our truth did some cool stuff in this, but Rey Mysterio really stole the show in this match, but even with all that, Samoa Joe is just too powerful at the moment. As much as I would love to see Ray hold the United States title, I say give Samoa Joe a good run with that championship. I feel like when he's champion, he has a big feel to him as champion. And that's something we need. Like Samoa Joe just has that aura about him of just a dominant champion. And I say like keep the United States title on him for as long as you can. At least a good seven to eight month reign even. Like, have him drop the belt at um, SummerSlam, if you, want even, 
if you really want to go that far. Like, yeah, just Samoa Joe's the fucking man, you know, and I hope he has a great match with Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania this year. And uh, we then get to the Women's Tag Team Championship match. It is the Boss and Hug Connection defending against Nia Jax and Tamina. Um, I didn't really feel this match. Uh, this match is where I kind of tuned out of the show a little bit. Like it wasn't, a, like it wasn't an awful match, but there was nothing in it to really um, gain my excitement or to gain my intrigue. Let's just say that. But all four of these women did try their best. Um, so. Bailey hits her head scissors on Nia and rolls her up to retain the uh, Women's Tag Team Championships. And uh, then Nia, Jax, and Tamina, being the sore losers that they are, attack them afterwards. And uh, Tamina stares at uh, Beth Phoenix, who was on commentary throughout this match. And uh, Beth fights back, but then uh, gets attacked by Tamina and Nia Jax. And then Natalia runs out to uh, help Beth Phoenix, but she also gets beaten down. So Nia Jax and Tamina look strong after this match despite losing and uh, it looks like it's going to be a uh, a possible fatal four-way match for the women's tag team titles with the boss and hug connection defending against Nia Jax and Tamina, uh, the Divas of Doom who are making a comeback now and uh, maybe the Iconics if uh, because they had a match with each other on Smackdown so maybe they're going to get thrown into the mix but um, yeah the women's tag team uh, division is okay. I don't think they're going to have the best match of the night at WrestleMania, but it will be hopefully just a quick little uh, match to show the four teams what they can do because this pay-per-view WrestleMania is going to be like six million hours long, so hopefully they can shorten some of these matches quite a bit, and I feel like that could be one of the matches that they kind of like cut the time for a little bit, so... Um, yeah, Sasha Banks and Bailey retained the championships, although Nia Jax and Tamina uh, looked strong after beating up everyone inside the ring. And then we get to the triple threat WWE Championship match. It was Daniel Bryan defending against Kevin Owens. And the returning Mustafa Ali, well, he kind of returned on SmackDown uh, the week prior. But yeah, the fans, yeah, they were not happy. They just wanted Kofi Kingston in that match. Like, the fans... There's, he's so over right now. Kofi Kingston is probably the most over he's ever been in his entire career, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, I was really worried that it was going to take away from the matches a little bit. I did think the fans were going to hijack uh, this match, but thankfully they didn't. And we ended up getting a really good match for the WWE Championship. Um, Ali hits some big flying uh, moves, like he hit a senton on... Well, Kevin Owens hit a senton on Brian uh, with Ali on his back, which was cool. Uh, there was an inverted Hanukkah on Owens, and uh, then hit a Spanish fly on Brian. Um, then Brian gets caught in a set-out powerbomb and then ki gets kicked out. Uh, Brian misses the running knee on Ali, but he hits the ring post instead. And then Ali hits a 450 on the ring apron, which looked great. Um, so uh, Owens and Ali super kick Rowan. Uh, as he interfered in this match, and um, it was just a great match overall. Ali gets thrown out off the top rope and lands on his feet and hits a tilt a world DDT. Uh, Owen hits a power bomb on the apron, gets taken out by Rowan, and then Brian slaps Ali and says, "You don't, be you don't belong here." And just being an asshole, Daniel Bryan is a heel. I know I've said it in my other reviews, but Daniel Bryan's heel run has just been fantastic so far. Um, he catches Ali midair with a knee. Uh, which was a great ending to the match, and uh, retains the championship. And then after the match, Rowan hits an iron claw on Ali, where he basically like picks him up with by the face and then slams him. It's, it's actually quite a cool move. And um, yeah, I thought this was a great triple threat match. I thought Kevin Owens was... Uh, everyone had their own little style and feel to it. Like, Brian was the obvious vicious heel, while Kevin Owens... Hit more of the power moves in the match, while Mustafa Ali hit all your high spots and all the flippy dippy shit. So everyone had a different purpose in this match, which I felt had a nice chemistry with each other, and uh, were able to show different elements of their uh, personas and their wrestling move sets. So yeah, it was a nice meshing of styles overall, and it ended up having a pretty good match for the WWE title. And um, hopefully, we get Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. If um, this match proved anything, is that 
these fans just want Kofi Kingston in that WWE title match, man. Um, but also, I have to say about this match is uh, big props to Mustafa Ali because he went in this match. The crowd was not having him at all, and he was able to actually turn uh, turn the fans around and actually get him to cheer him. So, um, yeah, big props to Mustafa Ali for uh, getting the fans to cheer him. That was actually really awesome for him to be able to do that. So, um, yeah, a lot of praise overall to Mustafa Ali and this match in general. And uh, then we get to the uh, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair match, and if Becky won this match, she would be added to the Raw Women's Championship match at WrestleMania 35. And uh, this match was just basically almost kind of an angle in a way because Charlotte kept mocking uh, Becky's hurt knee and she'd always try to fight back, but um, Charlotte would continue to aim for the leg and continuously mock her. And um, so how this would end is uh, Becky locked into the Sama, but uh, Charlotte gets her in the figure eight. And then Ronda Rousey, the Raw Women's Champion, uh, Mr. Fuck Kayfabe herself, uh, runs in and uh, hits Becky, so Becky wins by disqualification. Um, yeah, this feud has kind of been a little bit of a mess over the last month or so, and I think fans are starting to, like, really um, push away from this, because before, they wanted this match the main event uh, more than anything. However, this, this feud has been handled, like, just so rushed and just... The things that have been doing, I don't know, it just hasn't really been resonating with a lot of the fans. It just it seems like they've been overbooking this feud quite a bit. And now people are starting to lean more towards maybe Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston to main event. But if I'm being honest with you, I still kind of want this match to main event. I mean, they still have a few weeks left, so they can turn this around and make it really good. I mean, who knows? Maybe on the final Raw of WrestleMania, we get a fucking awesome segment between Ronda, Becky, and Charlotte. Like, it can it can still happen, um, because Ronda's been doing excellent as a heel, in my opinion. Becky's the most over babyface in the company, besides Kofi Kingston, and uh, Charlotte is also a terrific heel. So, they have all the elements there, and I feel like even if the booking just goes absolutely insane for the next few weeks before WrestleMania, I still think they're going to have a fantastic match at the actual show, and I think... If they do give the championship to the right person, which is Becky Lynch, um, I think it could be one of the best matches in Mania history if they do it correctly. So, fingers crossed. That's all we can hope for at the moment. So, we have Elias yet again appearing to uh, run down Becky Lynch and uh, Ohio. And then uh, Lacey Evans then walks down to do another fashion walk. I hate Lacey Evans' character so much. Just get in the ring. Just fucking wrestle. Like, it reminds me so much of Emelina, in a way, where they just kept teasing and teasing and teasing. Like, I think it was for, like, 17 weeks, where she just wouldn't wrestle, and then all of a sudden she just turned back to Emelina and just fucking left again. Like, oh, it was so shit. I don't get why WWE's whole booking with some female talent is just... Have them show up, do absolutely nothing for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. And then as soon as they're going to have a match, they just like either get released or leave or something like that. It was like, reminds me of Eva Marie. But at least with Eva Marie, it was kind of entertaining the way she would kind of pussy out of matches. But unfortunately with real life, she kind of just had that suspension and we never saw her again. And then she would eventually get released and now she's doing her own stuff. But um... Yeah, just get Lacey Evans in the ring for fuck's sake. She's a decent wrestler. Um, but then after she does that, Randy Orton then hits Elias with an RKO out of nowhere, which is uh, always great to see. But then AJ Styles hits a phenomenal forearm from out of nowhere. So I thought that was a cool little thing, since Randy Orton and AJ Styles are going to have a match at WrestleMania. And uh, the build-up has actually been pretty decent. Like, they had a really good uh, promo against each other on SmackDown. And um, there was also a simple little interview bit with AJ Styles uh, talking about the Randy Orton match. So, um, yeah, the, the feud and the build-up has been very simple. But it's very refreshing to see because we, at the moment, have, like, two, two major storylines where one person's getting constantly screwed 
by Vince McMahon and all that shit. So it's nice to just have a simple feud between two guys who have uh, differing opinions on things and just the way they got brought up in uh, the wrestling industry, pretty much. It's it's very fresh, refreshing. And then we get to the main event, which is uh, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, and Bobby Lashley. It, it sickens me that Baron Corbin gets the main event of pay-per-view, and it sickens me that he's going to face Kurt Angle in his retirement match. The only way I'll be happy with that is that if Kurt Angle makes him tap out in like two minutes. If so, then I'll be fine. But uh, they were taking on the Shield for potentially the final time. Uh, they mentioned again on commentary that um, Dean Ambrose was not going to re-sign with WWE. So whether he has officially left or this is just one big storyline, I'm honestly not sure yet. Uh, only time will have to tell for that. But this was a really damn good main event. Um, a bit slow at the start, but nothing too bad. But they really picked up the pace during the second half of this. And uh, Roman goes for um, an outside dive, but gets stopped with a deep six. And then Ambrose dives into the timekeeper's area. And then Ambrose and Rollins fight with, um, I think it's McIntyre and Lashley. They all fight in the crowd area. And then Ambrose dives off the pre-show panel table, but then gets caught into Rollins' uh, dive from the barricade. He dives from the barricade, like, really high up in the stands, onto everyone outside. Uh, Roman hits a Superman punch, but then uh, Corbin kicks out. Uh, he hits the end of the days, but then Rollins and Ambrose, after fighting on the outside for a little bit, finally get back in the ring and break up the pin. Um, Lashley gets fucking curb stomped through the announce table. That was a crazy moment. Uh, and also before then, they uh, stop Roman getting triple powerbombed. Then Roman hits the spear on Corbin, uh, the shield, triple powerbomb, drew, drew McIntyre through the announce table, then a super kick, Superman punch, Dirty Deeds combo, one last triple powerbomb, and the shield wins in uh, potentially their final match ever. And if this is their final match ever, then what a way to go out, honestly. Just looking extremely dominant. It was so good to see... Uh, Roman Reigns uh, back out there. He was actually really damn good in this match. And Ambrose and Rollins had a great showing in this. And I feel like this match was perfect to um, get more momentum for each three of these guys, depending on what they do at WrestleMania. It looks like Roman Reigns is going to face Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. Uh, hopefully that match will be just a quick one. Roman gets his win or some shit like that, and um, obviously Seth Rollins has a big task at his, on his hands at WrestleMania facing Beast Brock Lesnar, and uh, hopefully he's able to uh, defeat the Beast and uh, conquer Brock Lesnar at uh, WrestleMania, but who who really knows about that? But um, yeah, not really much to complain about this match. Baron Corbin lost, so um, that's even better. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but um, yeah, the Shield... Uh, go out on top, and um, this was just a great way to end one of the most dominant, maybe the most dominant faction of the 2010s when it comes to WWE anyway. If I said the whole of wrestling, everyone would be saying, Bullet Club, Bullet Club, but yeah, when it comes to WWE, The Shield has just been the best faction in that company, starting off with Survivor Series 2012, and at one point, having all three guys holding a championship at the same time and just having some fantastic matches. The Shield will go down in history as one of the best factions in WWE history. And uh, this was just a nice send-off for the team as they all go off and do their separate things permanently now on. So, um, yeah, this was it for Fastlane. This was actually quite a good show. Uh, my match of the night, I have to go with the uh, United States Championship Fatal 4-Way match. Uh, how am I going to rate this show? I'm going to give this show an 8 out of 10. I thought this was a damn good pay-per-view. Uh, there were a lot of good matches. There were some matches that were kind of eh, but there was nothing that was really insulting uh, overall. So yeah, if you haven't seen this pay-per-view, give it a watch. It's really, really quite good. But um, yeah, thank you guys for watching this uh, video. I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment down below your opinions on Fastlane, and if you're excited for WrestleMania soon, and if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. You'd be glad you did. Twitter and Instagram is at Law 31 If you want to check me out there, thank you so much for watching, and I am out in 3, 2, 1.